I want to share some things with you from my heart, from the perspective of, um, of where we've come from in 40 some years and, and share with you, uh, even prophetically, uh, my assignment to deposit some things in this house today, okay? Um, I did not know what the choir was going to sing. They did not know what I was going to speak. Um, and the song that they sang, listen now, the song that they sang is a musical paraphrase of the text that God is calling us to today. And they didn't know and I didn't know. Um, it's amazing how God can hook stuff up. And, you know, you know. Uh, but the song that they sang was a musical paraphrase of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Um, is, is, is there any more paper? Anybody else got paper in this? Is there any paper in the house? Amen. Yeah. I mean, I, I, ain't, I ain't hating on you. I'm just saying, you know. If you can't turn to it, scroll to it, click to it. Acts chapter 2. Okay. Um, let me kind of set that up. Um, the song that they sang is a paraphrase of what happened in Acts chapter 2, known as the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost. Okay? Let me give you some of the backstory. Jesus is on his way to Calvary. Uh, on, his way, on his way back to the Father, rather. He's already risen on the way back to the Father. And he speaks, let me just connect some dots, in Matthew chapter 28, turn to it, you know this one. And he says to them, on his way back to the Father, Jesus says, go into all the world and make disciples. That's, that's their assignment. That's their appointment. That's their job description. Go into all the world and make disciples. By the way, by the way, is it interesting that he said go and we say come? Come to my church, come here, my pastor, come here, my choir, come, come, come. And yet the, the assignment is to go. You start here and you move from here. He Luke's version of that scene is in Acts chapter 1. Matthew's version is in Acts, uh, Matthew chapter 28. Luke's version of that scene is in Acts chapter 1. Jesus again about to ascend. Watch this now. About to ascend to the Father. And he says this. You shall be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. Watch that flow. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. You shall be my witnesses. Acts chapter 2 begins the fulfillment of that. Acts chapter 2, the setting of Acts chapter 2 is Jerusalem. He says, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And so, you begin at home. Did you get that? Acts chapter 2 is in Jerusalem at home. And he says, um, when the day of Pentecost, watch this now, one version says, had fully come. Uh, one version says, when the day of Pentecost had arrived, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the Bible says, they were all together in one place and suddenly, everyone say suddenly. suddenly. Underline suddenly put a circle around it, put a highlight around it. I'm going to come back to that, I promise. Suddenly, there came a sound. Everyone say a sound. Put a circle around it, put a line around it, put a highlight in it. I'm going to come back to that. I promise I will. A sound. Sound from heaven, as of or like, or like unto a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house. Now listen. Um, I've seen pictures of, 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 uh, of, of, of 
day of Pentecost and they had pictures of people in a room and the wind is blowing and, and their eyes are like this, you know, and their hair is, hair is flowing and the wind is blowing. You know, um, it wasn't a wind. It was a sound. You get that? On this day, a sound and the sound was like a wind. And it filled, here's what I want you to see. It filled the whole house. That's what I want to focus on today. The choir just sang, Lord, send it, do it, release it in this house. <clears throat> Those of you who are joining us on, 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 online, different parts of the, of, of, the, of the world, you are a part of this family of this house and, and God's word today is a revelation for this house give me time to work it out okay uh, of the house I, I speak this on the house because the Bible says that the sound filled the whole house it it spoke it spoke of the the coming the falling the releasing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the whole house Many times, maybe most of the times, we read about Pentecost and it talks about individual feelings and, and gifts and that kind of thing, and that is true. But the text says the whole house. Um, Peter stands about uh, verse 15, 16, and he explains what just happened. Here's what he says. It's like somebody saying, what in the world is going on in there? Because what happened in the house spilled over into the streets. Is this still working? Listen to me. What happened in the house could not be contained in the house. Could not be bound or limited to the house. It was a spillover, see, literally into the streets. And so people are coming they're coming because they hear something and, and they're coming and somebody said what in the world is going on up in there and Peter stands Peter stands and about 15, 14 15 and Peter says people says he says this is that okay. so what what is going on up in there Peter says I tell you what it is this is that well, let's go into it can I go a little deeper? <laughs> what in the world is going on in that house that has now spilled over into the streets? This is that. Listen, listen. It was an outpouring. He explains it, he says, this was prophetically told by a prophet, Joel. Listen to me. The prophet says that God said, I will pour. Everyone said pour. I will pour out my spirit. And, and Peter says, this, here it is. This is that. What, what is it? It's God pouring out his spirit. Now, the pouring out began in the house. I declare unto you. The day is prophetically coming to this house when God will do what he did in that text. Listen to me. There shall be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on this house. It will be, listen, it will be a corporate anointing. Don't miss that. Individuals, yes, 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 yes. But don't miss the fact that there will be a corporate anointing that will fall on this house 
Listen to me. And spiritual discerning eyes will declare this is that. Please give me some time. Give me your time. Give me 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 time. What happened on the day of Pentecost was a corporate outpouring, a corporate filling, a corporate anointing on a house. And I declare unto you, this will be that. There will be such an outpouring of the Spirit of God that will fill this house like an unto nothing that you've seen before. And spiritual eyes will see this is that. There will be such a filling of the place. The Bible says it filled the whole house. Um, uh, an atmospheric residue. A tangible manifestation of the presence and power of God in this space. And spiritual eyes will say, yeah, there it is. Yeah. This is that. There will be such a heaviness in this place. It will transcend time. It will be a time when the glory of God will rest in this house after the benediction. I, I, I saw it in my spirit last night. In this room, but, on, but on, on this section over here, there'll be those on this side, and th this whole house, but here's what I saw. But on this side, you won't be able to leave. There will be such a presence of God that is not bound by the benediction. And people will get up and leave, but it's like you'll be glued to your seat. You, you, because you're, you will be in the presence of the glory of God. Some of you, some of you, some of you, hear this spiritually and not carnally, okay? Some of you will miss brunch. Because you will, you will wait. Some of y'all too young. As an old word, y'all too young. You'll tarry. You, I, I ask grandma what that means. Some of y'all too young. You, you, you'll tarry in the presence of the Holy Ghost. And, and you, you won't be able to leave. You, 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 some of y'all are going to be here when the next sermon, service starts. I saw that. I saw that. Some, of them will, some people will come for the 7 o'clock service and they'll still be here. Over in this section right here. They'll still be here because you will rest in the presence of the glow, of the glory, of the power of God. <laughs> Somebody say, I ain't going to sit over here no more. I ain't going to sit over here no more. I'm going to the other side. Over the other side. Listen, listen, listen. I declare unto you there will be an outpouring of the glory of God. It will flow out of this building. Verse 47 says, and they had favor with all the people. This fresh anointing will be a release of divine favor. 
outside of this building. Because it says, among all the people. The, 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 the favor on you will be carried by you outside of this building. Job checks gonna change. Because there'll be shifts in jobs and positions and promotions and uh, um, um, I, I see elevations, I, I, see, I see promotions, I see, uh, I see favor, 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 favor. Um, now watch this, because the word for favor is the word for grace. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. So the word for favor on your life will really be grace. And grace means unearned and unmerited favor. Which means it ain't even about you. Get my wrong, get my ring, y'all. Get my ring. Um, it, it'll be, it'll be, because it's unmerited. Yeah, my ring fell off because I lost weight. That's a whole nother sermon. I ain't got time for that right now. Okay. I lost my ring, baby. I thought I Let me jump back in the Holy Ghost. That was flesh, y'all. That was all flesh. I'm with the What was I saying in the spirit? What was I saying? Listen, listen. Everybody say favor. favor. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't fair. It, 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 ain't, it ain't fair. Somebody said fair is where they judge pigs and have horses and they have rides and stuff. That's not fair. It ain't fair. It's favor. It's grace, which means it is not about you. It is your unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor of God. Can, we, can I give it to you how I saw it? And it will be favor among people. People who were mean to you and nasty to you, who tried to block you and stop you. And God will use them as stepping stones just to take you higher and higher and higher over the folk that tried to block you. And God will, because of favor, the blocks will become blessings. I don't know who that was for. Folk that, folk that tried to stop you and block you on your job, God's gonna just take you right on over them, right on over them. I don't know who that was for. Everybody say favor, 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 favor. Let me give you the last thing about favor, give it, to you, give it to you as I saw it. That favor for some of you is someplace else. You will know it because you'll have to move to it. I don't know why I'm spending so much time on this side. Let me go over there. No, no, it's, it's, very, it's very important. It's very important. Very important. God will open doors beyond where you are because that's where the favor is. That means nothing to most of y'all, but somebody that just registered in somebody's spirit. Yeah. You, 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 you a door, an opportunity, an offer, I don't know who it is, a door, an opportunity, an offer will come with favor, but you'll have to move to it. God, I don't know who that's for. I don't a great, everybody say outpouring. Now watch this. Not only is there an outpouring, there's an incoming. You, you, most of you would know this. We started at a little place on 61st and Hoover many years ago. And the favor of God, the grace of God, we outgrew it. And we moved to a high school, Washington High School. 
and we outgrew it. We moved to a place across the street called the living room. And me with my crazy self did four services here. <laughs> seven, nine, 11, and five. And seven o'clock was here. Nine o'clock was at a place called the Proud Bird out by the airport. And then we came back over here. Sometime I'd go to sleep in the car coming from one side to the other. I didn't, I didn't know what, what bird I was in, what proud I was in. We outgrew it. We bought this building called the Trinity Building. We were in a deal and we lost it. We were outbid it and we lost the deal. And we were at Washington High School and a lady came to me, put a finger in my face. She said, you're a false prophet. You're a false prophet. She said, you said God gave us that building and God didn't give it to us. You're a false prophet. True story. Two years later, I'm driving down Florence on my way to the airport. I get a phone call in my car. The guy said, well, pastor, you can have your building now. This is a true story, y'all. Some of y'all too young to remember this. I said, who in the, I said, who is this? He said, the people that overbid you, the deal fell through. Wait, wait. We were going to buy that building for $5.2 million. We bought it for $2.5 million. Because when God gives you favor, it's favor that man cannot explain. Your job is to just walk right into it. I need about 25 folk to help me bless God. Tell somebody I'm walking into my favor. That's the wrong neighbor. Tell somebody else. I'm, I'm going to walk into mine. Matter of fact, you don't want, I'll take mine and yours. I don't, I don't. Favor, 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 favor. And God says, and I will add. I will add. The Bible says there were added. They were added. They were added. Over 3,000, watch this now, and such as should be saved. Listen, listen. The prophetic growth of this church will not be swapping sheep. Listen to me. Where God has taken this church will not be based on people leaving one church and coming to another church. The Bible says he added such as should be saved. <laughs> Salvation shall come forth. Many of you come to this church just to attend without a commitment. You are welcome, you are welcome. You just ain't in this verse. No, you're welcome, no, 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 you, you're, you're welcome, you're welcome. You are. Doors of the church open. But this ain't your verse. This verse is for people who recognize Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he, thou shalt be saved added those by save the growth is by those who are saved then he says this then he says this, this incoming is not only about numbers he calls off 15 nations in this text stay with me please 15 ethnicities so let me help you where god is taking you Will be he, he will bring people to this church who don't look like you. No, no, no. It, it is a multi-ethnic paradigm. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit had to do with God bringing people with different ethnicities. 
different races, different cultures that he brought into that one anointed house. So that God, listen to me, God is going to pour out this fresh corporate anointing and there will be people coming to this house who, let me help some of y'all. I'm going to help you right now. One Sunday, you're going to come and somebody's sitting in your seat. No, go ahead, shout on that. Go ahead, dance on that one. Dan Shabbat that. Shabbat that. Because God is bringing people to this church of different races, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different cultures, all in the name of the one Christ, the one power of the one Holy Ghost into the church of Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. no. You need to get ready for that. Let me help you with that one. When we move from the east side, from, from Hoover over here, some people laughed at us. Why, why are you going that far west? This is true. I saw a movie a couple of weeks ago, and, and it was about how they built the, uh, the Orient Express through the Alps, through the mountains in Europe. And they said they built the tracks before the trains came. Y'all ain't got it. Get over here. Somebody knew that the trains were coming and they would need a track to take them through the Alps. So God led them to build the tracks for the people who hadn't gotten there yet. Somebody sees it. When we came over here, it was God already knowing what would happen in this community. Can I go a little deeper? That's what your pastor says. <sighs> Listen to me. This community is already changing. It ain't gonna change. It's already changing. Don't believe it. Get up early in the morning and watch people walking little poodles, right? Now, right now. Walking poodles. No. Used to be pit bulls. Now it's little poodles. Can we stay real? Can, can we stay real? God knew the poodles was coming when we were still dealing with pit bulls. I need about 19 poodle pra praises up in here. Because God saw them coming. Can I go a little deeper? I, about a year ago, I heard, I was in a meeting, uh, about a year ago I heard, and it was an announcement that came out that this area, this area, land values, housing values, property values had gone up something like 60 some percent in five years. I stood here and I said, don't sell your house, baby. Don't sell your house. I stood right here and I said, don't sell your house. Because God knew they were coming. And you are the track that God built before the train start coming. I could do it about 37 praise God right there. God knew they were coming before they got here. And God positioned you here to this place. Let me go and look, let me zoom in a little further and I'm ready to go. I see three things in this passage. Listen to me. I see a system. I see a suddenly. Told y'all don't land that word twice come back to. Him. And I see a sound. Right there in that text. A system. A suddenly. And a sound. Verse 42 says this. They continued daily. One version says, steadfastly devoted to. They continued. The word continue is in what's called a continual present tense participle. They were continuing. 
it, it speaks of a routine, a habit. It speaks of a pattern. They developed a pattern, listen to me, that was preparing them to go into all the world. The church did not stay on the day of Pentecost. It was preparation for where God was taking them. Please stay with me. And so the Bible says that they gathered in this place and they gathered together and continued with a system, with a routine, with a pattern, uh, with a training program. Because their assignment was not ever to stay in Jerusalem. It was to go. Stay with me. Um, they, 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 they would cleave to a routine. Uh, they, they stuck with a pattern. I'm doing the best I can. They, 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 they develop, they develop um, uh, an exercise program see, to prepare them to do what God called them to do. I promise it's going to make sense in a minute. The Bible says they continued with the teachings of the apostles. Stay with me. So that their growth, their preparation for the next season hinged upon a routine, see, a routine of staying in the teachings. I had, I had a, let me tell you what I've been going through for the last about year and a half. Um, I had a professor at Oxford. Her name was Dr. Keene, brilliant woman. And she said this, she said, we order our lives, Elaine, so we order our lives around the rhythm of our relationship with God. That's gonna hit y'all about three o'clock this afternoon, y'all ain't got it yet. We, we structure our lives, see, right, around a rhythm of our relationship with God. She was a Dominican nun. She was a Catholic nun, brilliant theologian. And she was a nun, she said, I order my life. See, I have a rhythm with God and everything else has to fit in with that. See? I, I order my life around a rhythm, a routine, see, uh, a, a, a time habit, see? a discipline. Um, somebody was asking me, I've had people ask me all the time, say, uh, Bishop, how you doing? How you doing with the retirement? How you doing? Here's my, here's my answer. Yeah. My, um, my rhythm is off. See? We order our lives around a rhythm. See? And so for the last 14, 15 months, my rhythm has been off. Because I was in a rhythm for 45 years. Over half my life. I'm 76 years old. I, don't let this black hair fool you. I'm, it's a whole lot of black hair. But y'all, if you wasn't born with it, you bought it. So I'm just saying. Work, work with me, people. Work with me. But, 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 but I'm um, 76, so for 45 years, listen to me, that's over half my life, see? I had a rhythm, I had a rhythm, a rhythm, and, and my rhythm is off. I'm, I'm struggling to find a new rhythm. But the Bible says that when they gathered, they gathered, they gathered, they continued with a rhythm. And it was a rhythm that strengthened them and prepared them for their call. Now listen to me. They, they continued in teaching. I thought it was very interesting. They didn't just say continued in the Bible. No, no. That's assumed. But it says they continued with a teaching that would help them become the women and the men God called to be. Here's what I want to share with you. I want to share with you um, a resource, two resources, and they are um, teachings. The text says they grew because of somebody's teaching. 
Well, I ain't an apostle, nor I'm a son of apostle, but uh, I'm a teacher. And so I want to share with you two, two, two resources. Number one, uh, if you, you go to uh, kenfilmer.com, now let me tell you, I'm still getting that mixed up myself. Dot com, dot org, edu, USA, ABC, XYZ, you know. I don't, I don't know, you know, you know. I got this team, and, and they still got to have a QR code. Quick and ready. I don't know what QR means. I don't know what it means. But anyway, anyway when you get there, once and ever you get there, see? No, seriously, there, there's, there's a, a resource. It's free. For, so for two weeks, I, I, I want to share a teaching that will help you in your journey to go into all the world. Uh, when you go to KennethCalmer.com, one of them dots. Uh, uh, but there's number one, there's that, there's that resource. It'll start you, it'll start you for two weeks. It'll, it'll, it'll get you, it's a jump start, see, two weeks. It's a devotional on how to become uh, the champion that God has called you to be. <laughs> secondly, secondly, at, after the service, uh, they just told me most of them are gone. There's a few books left and uh, I wanna share with you, so it'll be available on the outside, called Training to Win. It's just a teaching, that's what the text said, teaching, a teaching to prepare you to be all that God's called you to be. Okay. They continued as a habit. Verse two says, second word, suddenly, I'm almost done. Some, 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 some happening, and suddenly, verse two, and, and they were doing this, doing it, they were doing it, doing it, doing it, and then suddenly, I see, a, I see a suddenly in your life. Listen to me. God controls with sovereign suddenlies. Give it to you again. God, God, God moves in your life, my life, with sovereign suddenly. Suddenly means with stuff that's unexpected stuff out of the blue stuff uh, unanticipated stuff that makes you say where'd that come from stuff that makes you say I didn't see that coming God's about to move with favor in your life with a suddenly. Which means this. Listen, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. You live in the tension, God, I love your word, between structure and spontaneity. One more time. It means we live in the tension of, of, of structure and spontaneity. And in the middle of a structure and spontaneity is a suddenly. Let me help y'all. It, me, it means you, 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 uh, you prepare, see, um, you, 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 you plan in pencil. I'm back to the spiritual side over here. It means you do your homework, you get your lesson, you plan. But you plan in pencil and give God the eraser. Because at any time, he'll take that eraser suddenly. Ah, oh God, I feel it, I feel it. It means when you've got everything lined up and you think it's going this way, suddenly. God steps in and adjusts your path and changes your mind and moves some folk out and some folk in and redirects your hopes and takes the taste out of your mouth of what you thought you wanted. Uh, changes your eyesight that what you didn't think you saw, now you see it and you step into it. You, you've got to learn to look for a suddenly. Ah, God, I feel it in here. 
it, it means it means I thought I was going down this road it looked pretty bad uh, I fell in this place I fell here but, but when I got to a point of a suddenly God changed my direction and what I thought I wanted over here I see what I need is over here who was that for I made my plan for what I thought I wanted am I the only one who got what you wanted and tried to exchange it oh I'm the only one huh you ever go to the exchange counter excuse me I would can I exchange this for something I don't want no more of that right there anybody ever may anyway. and and as your pastor said you had to receipt for it it's when God says, but I'm not done yet. I don't care how bad it looks. How, I don't care how many times you've fallen. I don't care how many times you've stumbled. It suddenly means I'm not done yet. suddenly means there's a tomorrow that you don't see coming <laughs> suddenly means your past does not define your future I don't know who that was for It means that God steps in with a new plan that you didn't see coming. It's when there's divine revelation that changes your direction. Divine revelation that changes your direction. It's a suddenly. I see a system. I'm ready to go. I see a suddenly. I see a sound. The whole text begins to shift with a sound. And the sound could not be contained in the house. And so, way off down the road, somebody heard a sound. The sound was inside, but overflowed outside. If all that this church does stays in this house, you're going to miss God. That's why all of these programs and all these plans are a revelation that God is about to take the sound inside, outside. God, I wish I had somebody. So, so, so somebody, you know, four or five blocks down the road. I hear a sound. What, what is that? What is that? What is that? Uh, somebody say it's a sound. Uh, it's not a sound out here. It's a sound in there that's overflowing out here. And the closer I get, the louder the sound gets. I still don't know what it is, but I'm drawn by a sound. Hmm. It, it's an anointed sound. Where, where is it coming from? Where, where is it and the closer I get, the more sound I hear. And the closer I get, I get some pep in my step. I don't know what they saying, but they were praying and praising. And the word praise only means to sing a song. Y'all ain't got that. 
This word for praising means singing a song. I hear a sound, but they singing something. And it's always a praise song to God. So whatsoever they singing about got something to do with God. And since it ain't to me, it's directed to him. They're singing something to him. And the closer I get, the, 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 the more I'm getting, what are they saying? Whatever it is, it's something toward God. And then I begin to pick up a few of the words of what they're saying. I, I'm trying to make out the message, see? But in order to make out the message, I got to get closer. Somebody tell me, get closer, get closer. The closer I get, the more I hear that it's a song, not to me, a song. What are they saying? Here it is. It's still soft. It's still soft. It ain't too loud. Yeah. The closer I get to this sound, I'm captured by a message that's about to change my life. It ain't, it ain't loud, it ain't loud. It's louder, but it ain't loud yet. And then some folk next to me start picking up them words. I'm walking and I'm praising. And when I get to that little house, it sounds like somebody turned up the volume. And I can't help myself. Before I know it, I'm doing some spiritual exercises. I'm clapping my hands. Y'all ain't exercising, y'all ain't training. Come on, come on. Say it again, say it again, say it again, say it again, say it again. Stay 
once you get started with this thing, you can't let it go, cause it won't let you go. Tell somebody next to you, I still got some praise left. That's the wrong neighbor. Tell somebody else, tell somebody else, here it is.